Hello my soccer universe, this time to something completely different and it's thanks to my subscriber Rossi who I'm looking forward to your content buddy soon uh, who actually suggested this topic and I have to say yeah it makes a whole lot of sense I not only have a shirt collection if you see my regular background there are a lot of scarves hanging I have Maybe not as many scarves as I have jerseys, but I have a lot of scarves. And yeah, I will now that we have the time, we don't have to cover any action. I gave you a few updates on what UEFA and Belgium and so on had, good, had been doing. You know, if anything big comes up, I'll try to make a quick video on it. Oh, yes, this was not that quick. But in the meantime, I'm giving you books that I like. I'm reviewing some jerseys. I will, I will, I promise, I will do the uh, league uh, jersey review, finally. I have to line it up, I'm planning to do, to shoot uh, this Saturday, Sunday, time permitting. Um, I hope that by the end of next week we are through with these. I don't know if I, what I will do with the background here, how much Frenchify I will do, or if I just keep it that way, you know, there is quite some French stuff on there, so let's see how it will go. Anyway, I might change the background soon, but you know, I'm getting already too many ideas in too little time. I'm wearing a Lusk Away jersey from 96 to 98, although this was only worn in the 96, 97, 97, 98 season. I thought something different for now. Red and black is to me the classic away colors, but I have to say we didn't wear red and black until exactly that season but since then it has become kind of a stone standard and it makes sense i mean black and white are clubs colors but the red and white are the colors of upper austria so having a little bit red and lusk always trying to also say we are the team of the of upper austria makes it um makes some sense to have red in there and you know have it darker make it red and black uh this is also special and i'll you have the link in the video up there. Uh, there is Brandon Augustine, South African national team player from uh, also was at the World Cup in France. Um, is on the back there. But we're talking already way too much about other things. Let's talk about scarves. Um, is I have first off. For the longest of times, when I started being a soccer fan, a scarf to me was an inexpensive thing to have to kind of represent the love for a team. I think I was first into scarves and later into jerseys because jerseys are expensive. It took me until two years ago to figure out actually you can get jerseys for cheap uh, if you just look at it. But most of the jerseys that I have, I paid full price for and that's why I didn't buy as many. And nowadays, yeah. I'm buying more, probably spending also more money. I also have more money. Frankly, shouldn't spend all that much money, but that's a whole different story. But yeah, scarves were inexpensive and, you know, you could get them on trips. So I made it, I think, especially in the late 90s and early 2000s, I made it that whenever I go to the town, I want to get at least a scarf of the local team there. But of course, also for my team, I... Uh, have gathered quite some scarves and yeah let's look at a few unfortunately i do not have my first lusk scarf here i think it's up with my parents maybe not 100 percent if it still exists or if this was my brother's which was a very generic scarf and when i mean generic i mean you have the scarf and i'll show you we'll look at this one a little bit later uh in more detail the soccer scarf or footy scarf, let's call it footy scarf, um, usually you have one logo at the end, then generically there is usually a flag or something there, and then in the in-between space there is something written, and this scarf that I had, my first one ever, was nothing more, I think it said last twice, and then there was uh, crossed flags in the middle, and that was that, and then some black and white jacket pattern, which has nothing to do. But this was what was sold uh, in front of the stadium by, uh, you know, traveling soccer memorabilia sales. 
people uh, there. This was kind of, you know, you went to the stadium. It was in the 90s. I went up there. We have it on the hill, which is actually nice. But meanwhile, I think it's kind of stupid. But it, there, there was something like walking up to, to, to the stadium. And then right before the entrance, there, was, there we have this entrance area. And there was the little cart. And there was the official official fan club, uh, Lusk. It was mostly the fan club. And then next time there was another one where you could actually buy some jerseys or uh, some other scarves uh, from other teams as well. So this is this was awesome. I got uh, quite a few that way as well. So that was my first scarf. My second scarf, the first scarf I got from such a seller because then, back, back then this was in the 90s. Uh, last cannot figure out that we, we might sell it. But the next one then... Uh, the club actually ordered or hired the fan club to sell merchandise and the next one is also my longest one and now let's see how this will work and for the longest time this was my favorite scarf we have the logo here which compared to logos that this circular thing here is way blown up but you kind of need to do it it says site 1908 since 1908 and then a last glint, but you know, the logo, this should be much, much smaller, as you can see here. Then we have a little bit more, it says, of course, Lusk. And then they did something what most fans had. Lusk was always Lusk. And L stands for Lint, Lintzer Athletic Sport Club, Athletic Sports Club of Lint. But many uh, in the club felt it's not quite right. We need to put the name in there. So what they did is we called the club Lusk Linz. Um, yeah. So we have two Linz in there. Let me see. Oh, I hate this with the camera. Let's go a little bit back. Uh, I hate that the camera is not mirror imaging. So it says here on top Linzer Stadion, so Stadium of Linz, a great name. I really wish, and now we, they will probably put a sponsor name up there. And then below Ewiglas Linz, weil Tradition verpflichtet, more or less eternally, Lask since, uh, or because tradition is obligation, more or less. And then you have the scarf. It is a huge, it's long. This is the longest scarf that, that I have, but it was for the longest time my go-to scarf. And it has what every scarf, as I said, has. In the center there is the last glow here. It's better, the better dimension, but of course here it doesn't really... I, I, I understand why it's done this way. It is very warm in winter, perfectly you put it around. Da, da, da. How, 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 how was I wearing this one? Usually something like that. with the logo and there you go. Uh, there was a time where I had, since this was a six, six second scarf, okay, you had one around here and then you had one around your wrist. This was the way to go. Uh, the more scarves I got, the more I added um, on the second wrist then, and then you put them uh, in your belt. I had at one point I went with five scarves. This was the fashion back then. Uh, one of the next scarves, and this was in 98, was when Lask was celebrating 90 years, was this wonderful 90 year scarf. I actually think it looks quite well, and what I really like about this one is that you have, let's pull it a little bit back, so 90 years, 90 Jahre. Uh, it has the traditional Lask logo. This is what the logo used to be, and I actually really like it because you not only have the black and white of, uh, in there, but you also have the flag of Upper Austria in there. So that's the logo, and it's now this this circle is on the new church instead of that circle that they made. And then you have the old, the, uh, the new logo that came out, uh, kind of stylized version, and you have the numbers 1998, and here you have. 1908. Of course, this logo did not come about in 1908, but I have to say this is a really well-made scarf, and it says Las Glintz seit Jahrzehnten der Club der Oberösterreicher. Las Glintz since decades. It's the club of the Upper Austrians, and in a way that's true. And you also have the black and uh, white in there. This is a beautiful scarf. The only thing that bugs me in 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 a way is that it says 90 years, so it was you know. When your club is now uh, 110 years old, the 90-year scarf doesn't do it 
really anymore. Then another scarf I got in 99. <laughs> That's a rarity already and it's not the pre pretty scarf but I, I, I was wearing it proudly. Uh, we qualified in 98 uh, for the uh, 98 99 we qualified finally for European competitions. It was the first time I saw Lusk um, in Europe. And you have two logos. Here you have the club logo and it says UEFA Cup 1999. And same thing here. And then you have the uh, coat of arms of the city of Linz. Also UEFA Cup 99. And of course you have the Austrian flag. So this is more of a generic scarf. Uh, I have to say I like the black and white on it. It says in the top 12 years of waiting are over. 12 years of waiting are over. Europa, we're coming. Europe, we're coming. Well, tell the story. I really don't like, and I don't know how they could have done it better, but that the European flag is off center. And so the whole scarf doesn't look like anything. But, you know, I was so proud that we made it to Europe that this was for the longest time always part of my ensemble. As at least three scarves you had to, and this was one of my three. How did we do in Europe? Well, first round, Stauer Bucharest. We lost 2 0 away from home. A little bit unlucky, I have to say. And then um, they got an early 1 0 in Linz, but then Stauer made three goals. We ended with a 2 3, so did not last long. So, two more I want to show you. Uh, this was now in the early 2000s. They made a competition. This was where the, this is not purely from the fan club. They said, um, design your own scarf. And if you do so, you will have uh, your name on it. Or is this this, no, this is not this scarf. Where, where, where do I have this design scarf? Anyway, this was coming around at the same time. So this is not a design scarf, but this is currently my favorite scarf. Uh, at least for when it's kind of cold. Last glints. Uh, you have now the little logo with the flag, which is usually taken by last glints. This is actually what maybe the logo should be. Um, I actually like the old flag logo still best, but you know, if you want to do a round logo, I think this one looks pretty cool. It also has the flag of Up Austria in there, so that's fine. Um, you have the nice last glints and it's kind of radiates out so i really love that but what really puts it over the top we already saw the city of linz linz das sind wir linz this is us that's that that's the way i have to go with and this actually is a little bit more the dimensions of the coat of arms but then the true piece de resistance if you wanna is we also have the coat of arms of Upper Austria, the Stolz von Oberösterreich, the pride of Upper Austria. This is gorgeous. And that's why I love wearing this scarf because OÖ is of course Upper Austria. I really love this one. I think the only thing that they could do better is maybe put the old logo in there. Although, as I said, this logo is not a bad logo, I have to say. So I'm I would be fine with it and this is the one that I really love to wear. I usually try to emphasize not on the Linz part but on the upper Austria part because I really love that crest. Uh, the cold, the cold, cold little arms. It's very traditional, something really nice. And the last one that I want to show you is kind of the odd man out in my last scarf collection. I mean, this, this, this is a thick, you know, two side. Uh, they are also really made for winter. I think this is a, what do you call it, Volden Jacquard style scarf. The last one I have is an Italian style, and you see it in my videos, that's the one that you always have. The Italian style scarves, and it makes a lot of sense to call it. They are really called like an Austria, I don't know how you, how, you, how you call them in English. Is You just have the pattern on one side, and on the reverse, it's uh, kind of the negative. This is a pretty darn nice scarf, I have to say. Uh, and the Italian scarves, the Italian style scarves are really great because they have a lot of detail in there, uh, which I like. Not sure I like that the yellow around last glints, but everything else, it says number one in Upper Austria, which at the time, to be honest, we were not, but meanwhile we are safely there, even Austria. And then the black and white history continues, the Schwarz-Weiße Geschichte geht weiter, which I have on at least 
three uh, Serie A um, scarves where it says La Legenda Continua. This is a typically uh, it Italian thing. I love they have both the coat of arms of Upper Austria and the coat of arms of Linz. You have the new circle logo and then you have the bottom part. I hope they never get the idea that we should just only use this one, but I think it does not look all that bad. But if you use any of the modern logo, use this one or do what has been doing anyway, go back to the traditional one. So these are five scarves out of my collection. We do it Lusk style. Let's see what about what I, I will do next. Probably will not do Lusk. We have a few more Lusk scarves, but they're not as spectacular as this one. Uh, as this D8 is the ones that um, carry a lot of even sentimental value for me and they fit very nicely with this jersey. Anyway, let me know which ones you liked out of these. Maybe you can give me a suggestion. Uh, what should, should I do next? Should I do National Team Serie A? Should I do my last scarf? Should, should I do... I can do uh, Spanish, a little bit of British, a little bit French a lot. So we have some stuff there. We have also some event scarves. Let's see uh, where it will go next. Uh, I might do one a week like that. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you like the idea. Uh, thanks Rossi again for um, suggesting it. I think it was a great idea. I don't want to necessarily take down all the scarves that I have here, but let's see. I might have to. Maybe this is time to kind of refresh the look a little bit as well. Um, as I said, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and you know, I think there are many more stuff as well. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!